Hello! All right, I'm very excited. The very first section of the course. Now, in order to get any job, you need to have interviews. In order to get any interviews, you need to actually apply and get these interviews. If you're the best interviewer, the best at answering questions, solving puzzles, the best coder, it won't really mean much if you're unable to get an interview at a company and get them to see you. So the first step is also this, getting the actual interview. Now, the number one thing we need to do is to increase these odds, the odds of getting an interview. The more interviews you get, the more likely to get a job. The best way to get a job on top of being a good interviewer is getting in the door as much as possible and practicing your interviews. We are starting this course with this first step so that even just a few minutes into the course, you can start applying to jobs and practice your interviewing skills, as most companies won't get back to you right away. So while you go through the course, you can start applying to companies and wait to hear back from them. And while you're waiting, you can practice your actual interviewing skills. So by the time that the interview comes, you're going to be ready for it. So let's have this goal in mind. If I apply to 100 companies, how can I increase the number of companies that will get back to me with interviews? We want to increase this percentage. By the end of this section, I want your success rate to be higher than 1%. 5% maybe, maybe higher. It doesn't matter as long as we are able to increase this. By increasing your percentage, you're getting closer and closer to that dream job. If you're applying to 100 jobs and you're not hearing back from any of them, or you only get one interview, that's 1%. Then you're probably doing something wrong. So we're gonna take a look at that and make sure that you're following best practice and you're also doing a couple of tricks to make sure that your success rate isn't necessarily 1%. However, there's some good news for you. Interviewing is a numbers game. A person who has failed 100 interviews and got rejected but got one acceptance at Google is just the same as a person that has never failed an interview and is now working at Google with you. Despite them having offers from all the other companies, never failing an interview, always acing their coding interviews, that doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, all you need is that one really good offer and you're in the same boat as somebody else. How awesome is that? In your resume, you don't put down how many times you failed. Your resume looks the same as Einstein over there. Well, maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration, but I hope you get this point. You, your resume looks the same as a person who never got rejected at an interview. That's the good news. And as a matter of fact, I know a person who has been rejected by Google multiple times, but kept applying and is now working at Google. So in the upcoming section, we're going to be talking about some of these topics. And it should not take you more than a week to set everything up and start applying to jobs. If you are spending more than that, then you're wasting your time when you can be doing something better, such as improving your actual skills as a programmer. Don't get me wrong, you can keep improving here and there to optimize things, but the overall effort you put in to set things up before you start applying should be less than a week. Most people spend too much time editing their resume and never applying to jobs, but we're not going to do that. So. We're going to be covering how to optimize your resume, LinkedIn profiles, your portfolio, how to use email and referral to your advantage. And we're also going to cover some common questions such as how to make up for lack of experience. Maybe you've just recently learned how to program and you don't have any job experience. How do we overcome that? We're also going to talk about when should you start applying to jobs? When are you truly ready because some jobs post that they need five years of experience and you're not sure whether you should apply to them or not. And then finally, we're also going to talk about where to find the jobs and what are some of the best places to look for jobs and apply online. And last note here, I want to warn you, some of these topics may be obvious to you. I've included them on here because not everyone will know these things. 
Although some things may seem obvious and silly, the last thing I want to do is to just assume that this comes easy and natural to you. Keep in mind that educational background, cultures, and many other factors will come into play here, so keep that in mind. The more technical, fun part, and frankly, my favorite parts, are going to start to begin after this section. So you're more than welcome to skip this section if you feel that getting an interview is not an issue for you. But otherwise, you might learn a thing or two. So stick with me, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.